I think when you don't have someone screaming in your ear that something sucks and being a little bitch about it and telling you to go kill yourself, yeah, it's very easy to enjoy these shows still. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Into the Geekverse. My name is Zach. And my name is Phil. And Phil is one of our hosts on this feed where we are revamping very early on into this podcast, but it's better to do it earlier on. That's right. Then 30 years in where we're like, we fucked up. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, which we didn't really fuck up on anything, but we had so many podcasts going on here that I said, let's just combine them all. Let's just make it one continual thing because we're all just, in the end of the day, being a geek, right? Yep. Pretty much. I'm excited for this change. Me I think too. Be good and healthy for us. Yeah. As well. Plus, it'll be fun because instead of me like having to like have you could just come on my podcast to talk about other things in video games, we can now just talk about yeah. anything, and that and that's one of the coolest things. So if you're new here, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow, make sure to rate, make sure to leave your thoughts. And of course, with that said, let's run down what we're kind of going to be talking about today. So this first intro, our, our first segment, is very much just the rest side rambles. We're just going to talk, shoot the shit for a little okay, bit. Cool. And then the second segment, we're going to jump in and review for the week some things that maybe we played, some things that uh, came out that we got to go through, which are, whether it's watching a movie, whether it's watching a show. And then we're going to jump to the main topic. This is the hot mic topic, which mm -hmm. it used to be called hot mic gaming. Now it's just the hot mic. Yes. Um, and we're going to talk about the best movies or games to watch and play for 4th of July. Oh, okay. So it'll be fun. Um, since the the day that this episode is premiering that you guys are all watching this, it is 4th of July. So happy 4th of July to oh, wow. everyone. And then we're going to take one to two viewer questions that I asked over on my YouTube channel, Zach Pope Review. So if you want to get a chance for one of those questions, make sure to follow me over there as well. But Phil, how you been, man? I'm doing pretty well. Um, just like I mentioned earlier, just celebrated my sibling's birthday. He's getting old and we're all getting old and that's just kind of a bit of a thing. But we had a really good time just being with family and bowling together. I love to just hear that. a really good time. Hey, so. I love to hear that. And, you know, with that said, I, I think that's the whole thing is like making sure to spend time with family. Mm -hmm. I think like when we were younger, we just want to spend time with our friends and all that stuff. And yeah. as you kind of get older, you're like... I should hang out with my parents. I should yeah. hang out with my siblings. And you know, lately I've been getting with that with my sister. Like I got my sister into the boys. Oh, that's cool. So it's like now we have the boys to talk bond. about. Yeah, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, I definitely wish growing up uh, I kind of didn't follow the whole thing. Like my parents are lame. My brothers and sisters same, suck. Same. But I think that's like a teenager thing. Like, yeah. Did you see Inside Out 2 yet? No, I have not. Okay, I was gonna ask you, like, you know, have you at least seen the first one? Yes, I have. Okay, so like, obviously, like, she's mad at her parents, you know, in the mm. first one, and the second one, she's a teenager and she doesn't want to hang out with her parents anymore. And like, when you watch that, it goes, ooh, being a teenager, you're an asshole. Yeah. And I think it's like the perfect movie to show a kid who's like about to be a teenager now or is a teenager to be like, prime example, why you are an asshole to me. <laughs> all of these emotions is why you are an asshole to me and uh it's kind of cool but like again as we get older and as everyone around us gets older yeah. you want to make sure to spend time with them yeah and uh same thing with doing with this too I, I think also in like high school a lot of people like to compare and contrast and be like hey i want to make sure that like i want to be friends with everybody you know mm -hmm. i want to have everyone be my friend and the more friends you have is the better right yeah I think so. But reality is when you get older, it's okay to have less friends mm -hmm. because the friends that are in your life are the ones that you trust the most. Yeah. I mean, prime example is that we've been friends since middle school. Yeah. Seventh grade. And, like, First day, in, man. First yeah. day. <laughs> when I was in middle school, I remember I did like youth athletics Yeah, and I've done football for over like six years, different sports and all that. And you kind of build a camaraderie, but yeah. I think it's more based on the fact that since you're training so much, right? Mm -hmm. And you spend so much time with these other kids, kids, they inherently become more of a family than your own family. Yeah, which and is true because you're, again, spending so much time with them. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big reason of why when we go to work, we call it like, it's the like office or corporate thing to say, but like a family. A family. Whether yeah. it's good or bad, some families you hate. Yep. And I'll say this is uh, me and Cynthia always say that we uh, trauma bonded working in retail. 
<laughs> um, and I think that's like a major thing is that sometimes you trauma bond doing certain things like that. Maybe you trauma bond during football because you were doing so many crazy things to stay fit and stay ready for yeah. your games. Yeah. And my coaches were fired. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> over the years, over abuse. <laughs> oh, oh, do you want to talk about that? No, I'm okay. You sure? We can have a therapy session right now. I'm okay. I kind of want. No, I kind of want to talk about it now. What about what? what happened to me in football? Yeah, yeah. So, like, over um, basically a little rundown is that over the years during my athletic years in high school when I was doing football, we had like different restrictions and guidelines to yeah. how we did um, our training. So, I think my sophomore year, okay. we had to sign a waiver when oh. we first started. Um, our coach at the time, he was like some player from Michigan State or something like that and the waiver was like you pretty much have to listen to these rules and if you don't abide by it and you can't do the things that are consequential then you're gonna get kicked out oh. and uh, that was like disciplining for being late and okay we had a thing called like tiger time so yeah. you had to be like 15 minutes early yeah. to something and that's on time some of this is kind of okay right yeah yeah, yeah. so um, a lot of it was just like we had a situation where if you were late, you had 100 up downs. If you were in excused absence, it was 200. And excused absence. Excused absence. So you're 200. like sick or yeah. do doctor's appointment or yeah. I don't know, a funeral? Yeah. Unexcused was 400. Fuck that. We had a uh, kid at the time. I was a sophomore. He was a senior. I quit. Uh, <laughs> His grandma lived in like Greece and she passed away. So okay. he was gone for a week. Okay. The coach came up to him and I was overhearing the conversation. He's like, Hey, of course you don't have to do it all at once once, but we're gonna need you to like record yourself doing what was it? So seven days, two hundred fourteen hundred up downs over the course of that week. And if he wanted to keep playing and be a part of the team, he had to pretty much do that do that and he stayed he did it all it was kind of would you have done that i don't think i could do 1400 no 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 but like through the week would you have attempted to to stay on the team or would you have been like nah i think i would have done like a hundred i was a fat boy so i was a lineman yeah so. that would have been fucked up to yeah. make up <laughs> what, 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 what position was he do you remember he was a wide receiver okay and he was uh oh man what's the defensive term for it I'm not a line. We're nerds, guys. Yeah. We don't we don't know a fucking yeah. everything. Like Phil might might have played football, but what? It's been mm -hmm. almost ten years since you've played football <laughs> at this point. Almost scaringly enough, ten years. Isn't that crazy? Next year is our ten year anniversary from You're graduating. Go to your high school reunion? If they have one, maybe. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Would you? I think I would. I think but it, cool. but it, like, do you know if your school's gonna do one? Because it, it's all based on your student council, I think. Yeah. How do they even keep the student council after they graduate? It's like literally just on a trust basis, I think. Oh. Like it's not from the school. Dude, I don't even remember my student council. Same. You know, I, can I even trust Can them? I? Can I? Okay, I'm going to say something. Now, if this person watches this, it's okay. I love you, man. You're fucking dope. Dakota Joy. Um, oh. He, uh, he posted in some student faculty, I don't know, whatever group I was in a senior and he's like, are we doing a 10 year anniversary? I should probably look and see if like anyone ever responded to that. But um, yeah, I, I, I just thought it was funny. I was like, you know, that is a good question. Are we going to, who's going to actually go? I've talked to like um, some mutual friends of ours and they said, I don't know if I would go. And I'm like, why? Like, why not? Like, yeah. like for me, like I haven't accomplished everything in my life that I've wanted to in 10 years, but I fucking sure as shit know that most of these people also have not done the same thing in 10 years. Yeah. Life has changed, but I've done enough to where I would like, yeah, I'd like to see like some people I haven't seen since 10 years ago, even if I hate most of them. Yeah. I mean, hate's a strong word though. I just don't care for them. <laughs> yeah. Which they probably also don't care for me. I think it'd be a lot of fun to mm -hmm. just see, especially for me since I did athletics for so yeah. long. It would be cool to see like all the people who I used to consider like brothers and yeah. talk to. I mean... When I, we could probably reminisce over the fact of um, my freshman year. Mm -hmm. Year, I think I told you, Michael Helms. Yeah, uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> let's not talk about him. No, 
No. Uh, I mean, you can. You know what? You know what? Do it. We'll just scrap that. No, 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 no. Don't scrap it. Talk about it. No. Um. This this is this is the shoot the shits. We yeah. are not. We're not. You know. Yeah. Pretty much just for quick context, quick story. <laughs> Freshman year in high school, we had a kid in our school. Pretty much, lost it. Killed his mom with a frying pan. Yeah. And he like still continued to go to school and pretend things were fine for yeah. like, a couple of weeks or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, do you, can you tell the Halloween story? <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on. It's not bad. Halloween. It's not like you did it on purpose. No. But that was around the time when PUBG was popular. Yeah. And I didn't have a good Halloween costume. And you went to a Halloween party. Yeah. So, I went to a Halloween party. Not thinking like, about this. Yeah. So, I'm like, what can I do that is like popular Quick. and yeah. trendy? So, I'm like, forget it. I'm just going to go to Goodwill and pick up a bunch of like silly clothes that I could just put on and I bought like a five dollar frying pan that I could stick on my yep. hip and I pretended to be like a PUBG character and I had like the helmet and all that I had like a little holster on me and when I went to that Halloween party everyone throughout the party kept asking me and um, were kind of upset with me because they thought <laughs> I was pretending to be Michael Helms <laughs> because only you only yeah you. Cause, cause i want to ask you band. some of these people that you like saw there mm -hmm. were you friends with them that were asking this or is it just random people sometimes uh it was definitely friends but it was also random people yeah it was just random people so those random like the friends were like oh okay i get it but like yeah. the random people were like yeah who the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> they're like wow that's kind of a bit of a spicy costume yeah I, I dig it. All right, man. Let, let's get into the reviewing segment. We're going to jump into our topics. We got a, quite a few things to review. We got A Quiet Place Day 1, mm -hmm. which you went to the screener with me. We got Kinds of Kindness to talk about. The Bear Season 3, which I have not finished. So this is going to be more of a preview. And then probably next podcast, uh, the following week, I'll probably talk about it in full detail. Uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree. Um, very excited to talk about that. I'm almost done with it, but I feel confident enough to talk about it. And then you're going to be reviewing Starship Troopers. Which, thank you so much to the developers for sending us a code. Yes, talk about, thank so. you guys so much. Yeah. I absolutely love the game. Can I take it off? Yeah, if you want to talk about Starship Troopers, start it out. Can you kind of give a little bit of background? I don't know anything about this game, Phil. Mm -hmm. What is it on? What can you play it on? I don't think it's on consoles yet, so I think it's only PC. No. I'll, I mean, I'll look it up real fast. Yeah, but. double check on it because I know that they are doing a console release right okay. now. Um, I think it's still in early access. Okay, it's Starship Troopers Exterminations, yes. right? Okay. All right. But yeah, give your review, man. Uh, yeah. Kind of what is Starship Troopers? All so, this stuff. Uh, um, Starship Troopers Extermination really takes the campiness and like um, that really satirical. Oh, man. How do I phrase this? That really satirical campiness attitude that the game or that the movie has provided, especially from the first movie, mm -hmm. and pretty much just turns it into a game. Um, is honestly, it over the top? Yeah, it's really over the top. Super um, democracy. It's pretty much like Helldivers 2, except it's what I think it is based off of. Um, uh -huh. for is it first play, or third? It's actually a first-person shooter, okay. this one. So for those of you guys who play like Helldivers 2, it's pretty much think of it as like a co-op experience up to 16 players. Oh. Yeah. It's really cool. Oh, so cool. it's a bigger squad. Yeah. It's it's a lot of fun, and I think I like it a little bit more. Because, than Helldivers. Okay. Yeah, simply because it's like, since you have so many people, you get to interact with so, so many guys who are just like role-playing. Yeah. Yeah really into it the community for that game are really awesome they're over the top they love screaming when things happen and they get blown up and it's really cool um a lot of the objectives are really awesome as well so basically you kind of start off on like these 16 player missions you traverse the map you might have like an objective to like grab this or to so pump. literally like help yeah. drivers so like pump fuel or you have to go to a base that is was it taken open over. or is it linear it's pretty open, actually. Okay. It's like a really open map. And so you would have like this giant map and you would go to like this base and you would actually get these resources to like do like a base defense kind of mm -hmm. segment. And you have to communicate with 15 other people 
and build like a really secure base and like have towers and everything. And then you do like a horde style, like hold out. And mm-hmm. then whatever the objective is, you might have to carry something out or you might just have to defend the place for a while just to make sure that the yeah. place is safe. And then uh, they cut all the respawns off and then they'll drop in the drop ship and you have to pretty much make it out. And if someone, if at least one person makes it, you win. Okay. But you try to get everyone in and everyone. Okay. Just, yeah. That's cool. No PVP, right? Just PVE? Yeah, just PVE. Okay. Um, so I am someone that's never seen a full Starship Troopers oh, movie. Dude, I think we've talked about it. Yeah. They're amazing. Um, honestly, you could just watch the first one. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've heard. So do you feel it's very much in the style of the movies? Yeah, over the top, uh, democracy. You could obviously see the satirical fascism yeah. and all that. And it's really cool. A, a good... A good bug is a dead bug. And yeah. They really lean into that. How many uh, enemy variants are in it? They have all the kinds of the arachnids. From okay. The movies. Um, are they pretty hard to kill or are they fast or like do they swarm you? So they have like an artillery one. Oh, okay. So they'll like put them all the way back in the map and they'll literally bombshell from across That's the map. That's cool. It's really cool. Um, did you ever play World War Z? I'm curious. Yes, is it kind of like that? Um, in like in the vein of like how m- how much you can get swarmed by or sorry, give me like three seconds. You okay? Yeah, no, I'm thinking. Oh, about okay. I'm like drawing the comparison, I don't think it's like super. Because I remember that World War Z game, all the zombies would like mm-hmm. run at you, and I was like, yeah. oh fuck. It, it's cool. Um, I know it's hard to say because. I only really got to play on the lower end difficulties. Okay. So I haven't really got to experience like the really the high, the higher tier. end stuff. Yeah. Cause they okay. have a class. It's all like class based. So oh, okay. So what classes. classes do they have? So the one that I'm really focusing on is like, um, it's like a defender class. So he gets like an LMG. Oh, and you level and, it up. Yeah. And, uh, what's really cool about him is that you have like the shield and pretty much you, it's like a 360 degree mm-hmm. coverage you plant yourself in the ground and uh, like a wall comes up and it pretty much protects you and it makes it so that way your gun has like no recoil and oh you can that's just, like cool. mag dump it's really cool it's like a last stand kind of feeling. nice feeling. nice they have, i like, dig snipers that. and then they have jetpacks i'm pretty sure nice so i dig that yeah i, I really how's the, the how's how's it run overall is it pretty solid how's the um, shooting i'm always a big shooter on yeah how it so shoots. the shooting feels pretty good if Anyone who's like into PC gaming, it kind of reminds me of like Squad as far as like the shooting goes. Mm-hmm. It's not very, um, I don't know what the shooting mechanics would call it, but like how in Rainbow Six Siege or like Call of Duty, yeah. you move your analog stick and the camera moves with the gun, right? Yeah. In this game, the gun kind of moves and then the camera follows. Okay. So it's very much like. More sway. Yeah. So more realistic, I guess, mm-hmm. is more the approach. More I think that's how Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is going to be. Oh, really? from the movement so? yeah when i was well when i was watching the gameplay and you see someone strafing to the left the guns moving, moving like that camera. yeah yeah okay. which i like that style a little bit more so yeah okay so that's cool anything else you kind of have like thoughts on overall like things that you would like to see in the game do you think there's enough to like support this game for a while or is I it more just come on the developers i think there's definitely to uh sorry no there's you're good definitely man a lot of potential okay um i do think there is quite a bit of content i know that they did have a recent big update i don't remember how recent it was it was recent i i saw it when i was looking at it as buy for everyone else it's early access right now on pc but it will be on consoles october 11th gotcha so that's when the full release is so that's when i'll finally be able to play it my pc or my laptop my gaming laptop will not play this shit yeah. um it, it looks it runs fun though pretty well i mean uh so i run a 5900 mm-hmm. um cpu ryzen okay pretty much and i have a 3090 yeah i mean it runs over 100 mm-hmm. frames for me so if someone were to choose between this and hell divers too with their friends mm-hmm. which one would you recommend if they have like a lot of friends i think Starship Troopers has a lot. That's of the thing that's PC. So I'm going to be honest with you. I was not going to play this. I wasn't going to buy it. I wasn't even thinking about like getting mm-hmm. it for consoles. I was like, I'll just live through Phil and enjoy it for what it is. But I really liked Hell Divers too. But I always wished you could play with more people because we have uh, a group of friends on PlayStation. There's like six or seven of us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, four of us started playing. 
Well, the other ones are just by themselves with randoms. Yeah. Where if it was Starship Troopers, we could have all joined. Yeah. So, okay. I like that. Um, other than that, what would you score it out of 10 right now? I definitely think it's an 8 out of 10 for okay. me. I really liked it. It yeah. was definitely uh, very campy. I love just the community. Uh-huh. Like I said, I only really got like 16 to 20 hours in the game. Okay. So I'm very new to it all. Um, I... But you're excited I, to keep yeah, playing it. Like I managed to just push through like what is like the beginner baby difficulties. Mm-hmm. How much does it cost? Do you know how much um, you paid for it? I can look that up too. Yeah, I think when I originally purchased it, it was like thirty bucks. It's twenty two point forty nine right now as we are recording on Steam. It's twenty five percent off. So yeah, so I was gonna say it's probably having a bunch of sales. It's okay. been doing a lot of sales. I loved it though. That's cool. I like that, man. I like that. Uh, so with that said, guys. Go check out Starship Troopers. Thank you so much to the developers again for s- giving us the game. Yeah, thank um, you. Sticking in the realm of video games, um, I'm actually going to leave Shadow of the Earth Tree for last, mm-hmm. but I do want to jump into Kinds of Kindness real fast and talk about that, yeah. the bear, and then we'll jump into a quiet place together in Shadow of the Earth Tree. So, um, Kinds of Kindness is a fucking weird movie. Um, <laughs> Just to put it as a preference, this is directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, written by um, him and his original collaborator who's done films like The Lobster, Killing of a Sacred Deer, Dogtooth. If you're not into indie films, you're probably like, what the fuck is he even talking about? Um, I don't even know if you've heard of any of this movies before. You might have heard of The Lobster, maybe. If I think not, I heard of the lobster, but that's about it. I love the lobster. It's about a man who has to find his significant other within a few days or he gets turned into a lobster. This is like, um, kind of reminds me of a Tusk a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It, it's incredible. It's so good. It's really dry humor. Mm-hmm. And that's how a lot of his films are. And Emma Stone, Jesse Plemons, Willem Dafoe, Hong Chow, great cast. Mm-hmm. And Yorgos, for me, has been like one of my favorite directors. When he says he's making a movie, like he has another movie coming out next year with Emma Stone and Jesse Plemons that I'm like instant, like already excited for. Even though... I actually found Kinds of Kindness to be his weakest film yet. Out of like nine movies, this is my least favorite. And oh, I'll, really? I'll talk about why, but I do want to shout out that other movie coming out next year. I don't remember what it's called, but it's it's about two conspiracy theorists who kidnap a high-end CEO because they think she's an alien. Oh, okay. And I- that's just like so up his alley that I'm so excited to see because... Poor Things was one of my favorite movies of last year. I know a lot of people thought it was weird. Uh, Phil's not seen it. He is going to react to it eventually. Um, It's fucking like Frankenstein meets Disney princess movies, and it's rated R, and there's a lot of fucking in it. And then there's um, The Favorite, and again, like I said, The Lobster and all those that I love. So Kinds of Kindness, though, is three different stories that all have like one little through line through it. And I'm not a fan of anthology stories. I think these movies drag out considerably. Um, I think one that you and me went to was Buster Scruggs, where there's like five stories in there. And when you get to one that's boring, I I think it was the Liam Neeson one, which was like the second one in it. Oh, God, it killed the pacing. Yeah. And yeah, when we watched Buster Scruggs, it was a dual. um, It was a dual movies yeah we had another feature. screening after it yeah outlocking 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 which was really i like that one. i liked that but i remember when we finished ballad of buster scruggs we were just sitting there and we we're like oh shit we have another movie to do yeah <laughs> i think you i think you were confused when i told you oh we have like two movies to see today man mm-hmm. but like i knew it was done but i think you were like all right time to go home I'm like no phil there's another movie <laughs> and then remember how they were going to give us food Mm-hmm. And then it was just like I'm like, let's just go get a burger. I know. <laughs> like, did we go to did we go to the food court and get it, or did we? I think we stopped at some food court. Okay. Place. I think we stopped at Five Guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which cost like four hundred dollars. But um, <laughs> but yeah, kinds of kindness. Um, the first story I really liked. Okay. The second story was interesting until it got fucking awful, and then the third story, it had to win me back from the second story. So it took me a while to get into it. And then once I was into it, I was like, okay, I like this. And I think if I were to review each segment separately, I would be able to give the first one like an eight out of 10. The second one I would give like a four out of 10 to. And then the last one I would probably give, we don't do sevens on here. So I'd probably give it a six out of 10, which might be because 
I was just so drained by the second one. Yeah. I think if I were to watch the third one on its own, I might like it a little bit more and go to an eight. Mm -hmm. um, and for people who don't know, we don't give sevens because Phil says um, sevens are too easy to give out. That's yeah. just you taking the easy road. So mm -hmm. our scale goes, uh, how do you, you say it really well? Um, one through 10, remove the seven. Yep. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I was going to say um, this movie... What is it going to be? Is it like a it's out, movie? It's no. So it's in theaters right now. It'll oh, probably really? be on Hulu like later this year. If you're a fan of those movies and you want to see something weird, check it out. It's very dry mm. um, to kind of go through each story and just kind of give a context to what they are. The first one is about a guy whose whole life is controlled by his boss. Okay. And it's kind of a satire on ass kissing at the, at the workplace. Gotcha. So Jesse Plemons plays uh, the, the, uh, the employee and Willem Dafoe's his boss gotcha. and to kind of just set this all up is every morning he gets a note from his boss that says what he's allowed to eat for the day when he's allowed to make love to his wife what he has to wear and all this stuff and then he has to meet him in the office and discuss this and then he gives him what he wants him to do and he tells him I want I want you to hit someone with your car really fast like that's and that's the setup oh that's the second one, <laughs> which has a wild foursome scene, um, wasn't expecting that. Like, oh, poor okay. things had a lot of sex, but uh, uh, the second one had a, lot, a foursome scene that caught me off guard. But uh, this one's about a dude, uh, a cop whose wife has gone missing mm -hmm. on like a, she's like a scientist or something. And then she shows up randomly, but sh her shoes don't fit her anymore. Is this my wife? That's those are the questions he asks. Oh, okay. So it kind of reminds me of uh, the thing in a way. Yeah, um, but it's I don't get it. I didn't get that one. And then the third one is about a cult. Like I assume it's a like a religious cult mm -hmm. that are trying to find someone that can bring someone back from the dead. Oh, very cool. But this this cult like they'll go out on their like missions, mm -hmm. and, and then they come back to this giant mansion. Where Willem Dafoe is the leader with Hong Chao. <laughs> and um, like they'll be like, they'll all sleep with them. Oh. They choose who they want to sleep with. Do we want to sleep with Willem Dafoe or do we want to sleep with Hong Chao? Um, crazy. It's weird. And then, like, if they end up getting like sleeping with someone else outside of the place, they have to go into like a decontamination spa thing. <laughs> and then, if that doesn't, then they lick them to see if they were decontaminated. And if they're not, they're kicked out of the cult. That's crazy. It's weird. It's really weird, but if you like weird shit, check it out in theaters. After that, uh, The Bear Season 3, more of a preview for this. Uh, I love this show. I think it is such a phenomenally written show from the first two seasons. I'm only five episodes in right now, and I, I think there's 10, so I got five more to go. To give it a little bit of a preview, though, I think it's easily the weakest season so far. Um, some of that might have been the writer strike. Some of it might have been the actor strike. The performances are all still great. I just, I think they had a deadline and the scripts weren't fully finalized. There's a lot of good stuff in there, but I'm curious to see how the back half works because the first episode's divisive. It's very much a montage and it's kind of beautiful mm -hmm. and a little bit more of an understanding for a character, but I also wish they would have just jumped into certain things right off the bat. The second episode went a little bit too fast. And then three, four, and five I thought were great. I thought three, four, and five were great. Okay. So curious on that. But Phil, let's talk about A Quiet Place Day One. Yeah. Uh, this is a big thing. So you went to the screening with me, and um, I, I thought the movie was really good. Yeah. Um, I think the more I sit on it, the more I like it. It's still probably my least favorite Quiet Place film, but that's not saying that much because or that is saying a lot because a quiet place franchise is fucking great. Yeah. Like I've, every single one of the films are at least an eight, mm -hmm. if not a nine or a 10, I would give the first two a 10. This one, I gave a B plus. So like an 8.5 when I reviewed it, I think I might go up to a nine now. Like the more I think on it, um, it wasn't what I was expecting it to be. And I think that's why I was so, taken back by it when I first watched it with you was when I went into this movie, I didn't see a trailer, but I expected more action. I expected heavier action, a lot more aliens, which we got more aliens in yeah. this, but I expected to learn a little bit more about them specifically seeing on day one in a huge city like this. But what I got 
was a movie about falling in love back with life in in an apocalyptic world where a world that kind of failed you, whether it's from health or whether it's just from family, Mm -hmm. and you coming to find someone random in the world that means the world to you, even though it's platonic. You know what I mean? Like they're not in love or anything. And that really kind of made me think. And just how the first two were about family. Mm -hmm. And family in the apocalypse, this is more about the strangers in an apocalyptic setting. So it kind of hits well. The thrilling nature of it all, those sequences were great. I think we also said the best looking Quiet Place film. Yeah, Um, some of the shots that they did... um I'm allowed to speak about like certain shots, right? Yeah, yeah, of okay. course. The, the, just as a heads up, we're going to not spoil anything, Yeah, but we're going to talk about some of the shots that might have been in the trailer, might not have been. So Yeah, the the big one was the one that you mentioned to me when we were driving home. Yeah. was when they were in the water. Yeah. And you see the creature. The silhouette. Like, yeah, the silhouette. They did a really good job of like making it like far away and then as it's closing up yeah, and they're like running out of space, they're in the water. And then when it was just standing still, when Mm -hmm. they flashed the light on it, it was creepy. And there's a lot like that. Like, I think one of the things that really took me is when they first invade, when they drop down, Mm -hmm. it, it it reminded, and I'm sure for New York people, this might've hit a little bit harder, but. I imagine that that's how like a 9-11 situation would have been. Mm-hmm. The ash, the dust. Like when you look at video footage of 9-11 happening, like that was a huge thing. And obviously like I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I don't really remember seeing it on the news, but as you learn through it through school and stuff and seeing so many of the different elements of like how it's just all the ash and the building falling, you see a lot of that in this and it's reminiscent of that. And I, I can't imagine how it hits for people who live in New York specifically, yeah. but the fact that within the span of what, maybe an hour, probably less, the world was changed forever. Yeah. Just like that event. It, it was cool how it just, you see the buildup of like people kind of seeing things yeah. falling from the sky, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden it just kind of hits you out of nowhere. And then, you and just, I like how it's all from her point of view. Yeah. Like she's struggling to see, she gets knocked out. Like, and I'm sitting there like, where the fuck is the cat? Mm-hmm. It, Cause the cat dies. I don't know if you know my rule for if an animal dies in a way that wasn't needed for the film, I drop a whole letter grade. Oh wow. I'm so against animals dying in movies that don't need to die. That's fair. So, I respect that. But, so shout out to that <laughs> cat, man. That cat was awesome. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, dude, like it was very intense. Uh, yeah. Um, I think A Quiet Place, just like as a casual viewer, um, just like into movies and everything, I think they have a really unique IP that gives a really good experience that no other movie has done, at least as far as my knowledge. Yeah. It makes just, you want to be quiet. Yeah. It literally, like when you I, go to a movie, how many times do you see someone playing on their phone getting up jingle jay and there's still fuckers that do that during a quiet place but primarily it feels like everyone's trying their best like my water i didn't drink it at all throughout like almost the entire film even though i was thirsty i didn't want to be that asshole and shout out to phil okay (laughs) every time we go to a movie and it it never bothers me Mm -hmm. you chew on ice yeah i'm a nice and but you're not the type to chew on it in like the fucking quietest moment you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Did it suck not being able to chew on your ice throughout this movie? Yeah, it was kind of hard. Like, Phil chewed, like, so much ice beforehand, and then the film starts, and he's just like, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be quiet. Like, um... I think just the... It's one of those movies I think enhance is, like, enhanced by going to a theater. Like, having an yeah. actual theater experience yep. with other people mm-hmm. is so cool, and I think that's how, like magic movies should really yeah be. the feeling that it gives you when you go yeah. to the films you know um, kind of like the only other time i really feel any kind of different feeling when i'm in the theater like that is when like Endgame came out mm-hmm. when everyone's just celebrating and now it's on the opposite spectrum is where, to be quiet yeah so like when the first movie came out all my friends who went and went to go see yeah. it no one wants to speak anything you could hear the movies from the other room and it's like be quiet over there yeah <laughs> So it's really cool. It, I liked it. it. It is a, such a cool feeling. So I hope they keep doing these. It's making a lot of money yeah. as we're reviewing this. I know it came out the following week and we're talking about it now. But if you haven't gone seen it, go see A Quiet Place Day One. I highly recommend it. I think it's a good film. Yeah, definitely. What would you give it? I definitely think it's an 8 out of 10 for me. 
Okay. What would you give the other two? I give the first one a nine. Okay. And then I probably give the second one a six. Wow. I love the second one. That's my favorite one. So, I mean, it's, it definitely has its like memorable moments, but it's the most forgetful. I think you need to watch it again. I probably need to. I, I think you do. So, all right, man, let's move on to the final thing to review, which is shadow of the earth tree, man. Oh, yeah. So since you have not played it yet, Mm mm-mm. He played a little bit of Elden Ring. Um, what do you want to know about it, Phil? Let's see. Do you have any questions? I think the big thing to ask is, since you played, how many playthroughs of the original? Uh, game? I did. F- I, I was on my fifth New Game Plus. So say, because like I haven't been in the game, right? Yeah. Um, I have like I think two hundred hours into it, or which is fucking like insane. You have way more than I do. Well, that was scary. That was my foot. Oh. I hit my foot on something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, so how do you get like a bigger advantage for being like new game five times? Uh, being no, like no, level 900 uh, no, no, right? no. They highly recommended you start a new character. Oh, really? Because every time you play again, it gets harder. Oh, okay. So going into this, a lot of like I might have been, I was like 272 right now, I think is my level. But going into the DLC, I think it was 265. And it, it's awesome. I, I I love it. It was fucking hard, though. I mean, a lot of people talked about that in their reviews and stuff when it was coming out. Like, this is, you know, a lot of you guys complained how easy some of Elden Ring was, but th- this is the real deal. And it is. It is an experience. It, it also tries to, it's like for people who have never stopped playing Elden Ring, but it's been two years. That's so true. I had to literally re, like, I have all my gear. I'm like, how the fuck? Because I fight with the giant ass colossal great fucking weapons that are gigantic yeah i forgot how to use them so i'm like trying to retrain myself while at the same time trying to figure out this giant map but i will say i think this is one of the best add-ons ever made for a game Uh, i was gonna say um i saw that it won like best dlc out of something oh yeah for metacritic it's the high it it beat the witcher 3 finally yeah and i saw that uh cd project red yeah did the drawing which was cool which was really sweet and and Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I got asked a couple days ago, like, what would you rank like the top ten DLCs of all time? Oh, and it, I couldn't figure out the top That's ten. A tough one. Yeah, I'll talk about it in a second because um, I wanted to leave that for a topic to so start th- kind of thinking about that. Yeah. Um, but Shadow of the Erd Tree, if you know what you're doing, like instantly, it it does kind of hold your hand. Once you pick up this little fragment thing, it's like collect these. It makes you stronger here. Don't mm-hmm. collect them, you get your ass beat, which is true. So instantly, I'm going around finding these. You can find some for your spirit ash too, which makes them stronger in this world. Oh, okay. And it's funny. I go to this dungeon, and and before I even find the fragment, I'm like, I'm going to fuck this motherfucker up. Like, this is going to be easy. Like, bro, I hit him 10 damage. (laughs) And I like, I'm like, what the fuck? And then he hits me one shot. This fucking one hit me. I'm like, ah, okay. Yeah, that's not cool. So then I find the first fragment, and I start leveling up, and I think I got up to like three Mm-hmm. Went back to try and hit him. Fuck, man. Still got my ass whooped. It was still like throwing a marshmallow at a fucking rock. <laughs> like still nothing. Um, so then I kind of just came to the conclusion. I'm not going to look up anything. I don't want to see anything. I looked up a lot while playing Elden Ring, which I know a lot of people like the experience of finding things on their own. And I love that for the first 40 hours. But then I feel like I'm missing stuff because there's yeah. so much shit to the world. And I will be honestly, the last five hours of the dlc i think i've been looking up a little bit more before i finally beat it i'm on the final boss guys don't worry i can go beat it today if i wanted to but i want to do all the side stuff because apparently some of the side missions disappear if you don't after you do a certain thing in the story so i've been trying to finish those and i'm almost done i think i have two more left and then i'm gonna go finish the the entire boss but okay overall um oh also they updated the game to make it easier Really? That, yeah, they actually upped the fragment, like how much damage and health you have now. Oh, from okay. Them. So I will say, since that update, it has made the game easier. Mm. There's two bosses that were giving me massive issues, which were... I had already beaten Mesmir the Impaler, who's on the box art and shit. But there's this fucking asshole named Commander Gaius, who's on this giant boar. Oh, and yeah. his, his AoE is insane. 
Uh, I was watching my friend through uh, Discord because he's yeah. like into it right now, mm -hmm. and I I see him fighting Commander Gaius. Did he kill him? No, he he got his ass. Okay, for he, like so an hour straight. He should try. <laughs> yeah, I tried for an hour straight and I gave up. Went today, first try killed him. After the update, it, it makes it a lot easier. Like there was even one other boss that I only tried like twice, like way earlier on because I found him very early, which is funny because they're like the third story boss, and I got all the way to them without killing the other two bosses <laughs> before. Oh, and I tried going hitting them. Oh, fuck no. I didn't do any damage. Went today. Second try, I got him. So I think that update did make it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, take that as for what you will. I'm excited to see what the final boss is. I know who it is. I got spoiled on that. But I'm excited to see how I do up against them. Mm -hmm. And I'm. it was fun because fighting Mesmir the Impaler, I taught myself again how to play the game. The first main boss, Renello, which was a fucking bitch, I didn't know what I was doing. I was focusing on my summons. I was trying everything possible to kill this thing. I just got so strong to the point where I was able to. Once I got the mess mirror, I learned how to dodge again. I learned when to hit with my greatsword. Like I was learning, okay, this is how I need to play the game. Mm -hmm. So now I feel 110% back in on Elden Ring where I can just smash the shit. And I feel good i did pvp today and i fucking wrecked some dude and i felt great um <laughs> i got this one weapon that's uh it's like a random drop and mm. it's like this fucking it's called a fiend's arm it's like a fucking enemy's arm and it's a colossal but it does 128 bleed damage every time you hit someone with it oh. bro it is so, at first i was like this thing's like throwing marshmallows at a rock again mm. then i leveled it up all the way and I went to, which boss was it that I did the damage to really well? Fuck, I can't remember off the top of my head. But there was a boss I, I, I wasn't stuck on, but I was kind of worried about going up and fighting. Yeah. And I did this swirl move twice on it, is Ash of War. Mm -hmm. Bro, it took so much health off him. I'm like, oh, I'm going to keep doing this thing. And it just it knocked just him down. just been to win on him. Yeah, yeah. That's so I, I really liked it. I love Shadow of the Earth Tree. If I were to give it a, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Oh, I think the, I think the exploration is even better than the original Elden Ring. And I think the coolest thing is, is, again, like I said, you don't have to kill. Like, obviously, there's some bosses when you kill them, it ex expands the map. Yeah. But I continuously found more things to look. It's a very vertical map. Oh, so there's okay. stuff below. Like if you see something below in a care, uh, I don't know, in a ditch, mm -hmm. you can get there. There's a way. Whether it's a hole in a wall or some secret path, there's a way to get there. Same thing up high. If you see a castle up above, you can get there. It is such a vertical map that it is beyond my fucking mind how they crafted it. That's really cool. So oh, I loved it, man. Like but I do want to talk about the best DLCs. Um, I think this is a good conversation to have. Um, no particular order, though. Okay. I think that's almost impossible to talk yeah. about. So Shadow of the Earth Trees for one of mine. Mm -hmm. I would go also... Um, do you have one that you want to mention next? I'm just... I'm much more into thinking of like DLCs and mm -hmm. just like the games that I grew up in. It's okay, yeah. So um, I think some worthy mentions are obviously like... So just send me one right now and then we'll go back and forth. Okay, well, I haven't done it. It's oh. the, the Witcher 3 DLC, but what I was oh, okay. thinking was um, there was DLC for, I think, Gears 2, Gears 2 where you actually got to like play mm -hmm. as a Locust for a little bit. Was that too? Disguise as a local. yes 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 that was the big that one. was a cool that was a really years cool three one. had a good one too with rom's um, shadow yeah that's right too and then i was thinking about fallout new vegas's last dlc i never played any of those so that one is the lonesome road where you get to okay. meet um what's his face i forgot his name already ezekiel someone like that ulysses ulysses which is the a lot of people say it's like one of the coolest characters yeah he's one of the coolest characters and uh, Lonesome Road, and then Honest Heart with Joshua Graham, the uh, mm -hmm. Burning Man of the Caesar's Legion. And I think he's like the best character ever. I could okay. listen to that guy read me a book. He's such a good I, I love that. Well, for me, uh, I'm going to go, again, no particular order, uh, Burial at Sea for Bioshock Infinite. I okay. think is flat out one of the best add-ons, dude. That's it is a good one. the way that it opens up the world, the way that I got more time with Elizabeth. It just made mm -hmm. me so happy because I think Elizabeth is probably my favorite Bioshock character. Um so I love that. Up next, uh Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep for Borderlands 2. Uh just easily one of my favorite things ever that they brought to Borderlands and it made me love Borderlands 2 even more. 
every time I go back to play it, I just look forward to that because it's not just because of the fantasy elements. It's because of what t- it's for Tiny Tina. They, it's it the got grief. Its own it got its own. Yeah, too, which right? I never. I I bought it. I never played it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't. Um, I'm not going to say this one, but I think you would like this. Uh, Blood Dragon from Far Cry 3. Oh, yes. I love Blood Dragon. Yeah, I knew you did. I, I liked it. I liked it. I, I didn't. I, 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 I wasn't blown 80s, away by it. Like, yeah. Cyber, retro mm-hmm. kind of feeling. Yeah. Um, man, that's a good DLC. Yeah. I so really like I do that one. Uh, Diablo 2, Lord of the Destruction. I oh. think that one is incredible. I think that's just the pinnacle of it all. Yeah, Every time that. Blizzard does an add-on, it's usually yeah. great. It's so. like how you can't play Diablo 3 without uh, Reaper of Shadows. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Like it, right? Yeah, and then uh, Warcraft 3, Frozen Throne. Oh, if you yeah. back in the day, that was great. Um, newer one, Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty. Uh, really shook my mind i mean the story for that's great this is another one you're gonna like red dead redemption undead nightmare yes one of the best dlcs um that was a really good expansion shout out to these ones uh gta 4's dlcs the ballad of gay tony and lost and damned were great uh, i wouldn't personally put them on mine but i did like those dude i hated grand theft auto 4 i love grand theft auto 4 why I hate that's it. my favorite one i don't know why i hate it but i just don't like it i get it that's fine i think you're fucking crazy yeah. is it because nico do you want to go bowling I don't know. It was just like, I didn't really like the protagonist as much as I did like San Andreas. Or yeah, like, fair enough. That's okay. Um, Liberty Th- that's a big thing with GTA though, is that if you're not into the protagonist, like like GTA 5, I didn't replay a lot because I fucking hated Trevor. Oh, really? I hated Trevor. Yeah. I hated, I actually, to be honest with you, I hated most characters in that game. Mm-hmm. But I, I, they were entertaining, but like I just didn't want to play as them. Yeah. Um. Up next, The Last of Us Left Behind, uh, the DLC with Ellie, finding her backstory in that original game. Fantastic. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, The Witcher 3, I've never played all the way through those DLCs, so I don't want to say them, sadly. Yeah. Um, also, this list I'm looking at, Fallout New Vegas, is the number one. What, Lonesome Road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it uh, Honest Hearts on there? Honest Hearts as well, yeah. Yeah. So Those I'll say like- that. I got two more, though. I think I'm going to go, again, this is no, no particular order. I'm probably going to go number two as uh, one of the Fallout 3 ones. I think Fallout 3 just had a massive great. Mm-hmm. Like, they were all so fun, whether it's uh, um, The Pit. Was that what it was? Yeah, where you get to be a slave in yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah, The Pit was cool. I thought Mothership Zeta was awesome. Mm-hmm. A lot of people hate Anchorage. I loved it. And then Broken Steel lets you play the game more, yeah. which was like, it you have to have that. gave you more story, and then it made it that way when you finally beat the game you could just do whatever you want yep um but my number one and this one is the only one in order is mass effect 3 citadel dlc Uh, it changed the fucking game and that's what's so cool about the legendary edition is it's all weaved into the story all the dlcs are just weaved into the story now mm -hmm. to where they were they don't require them but they recommend you do all this before you beat the games you know what Uh, a good worthy mansion too is the dlc for metro series Metro. Metro games. I never played them. Were they good? Um, yeah, there's one um, in Metro Exodus. Yeah. The voice actor who does like Dempsey, he's a, one of the characters in Exodus, and it actually uh-huh. follows his story. I think it's like Sam's story, and then you get to follow. Oh, that's um, cool. Artyom's wife, Anna. Her, yeah. Her dad, I think. Her dad is like has like his own separate DLC. Mm-hmm. And it's like at the peak end of the game as well. Uh-uh. I have no uh, idea. I didn't yeah, even know they had are, DLC, to be honest with you. Th- those are really good ones. Um, the Metro series is always like really good story. I love them. They're great. Uh, Destiny fans, make sure to shout out your favorite DLC. Ooh, you can't because most of them you can't fucking play. <laughs> yeah, Bungie, I'm calling you out for that. I'm calling you out for that. Um, jumping in, though, man, that's our reviewing segment. I think, is there anything else you want to review or talk about? Do you want to talk about the boys at all, or do you want to jump right into the hot mic topic? Uh, I think I'm good with uh, the hot mic topic. Um, I've watched the boys up to episode five, the one that just oh, okay. came Do you out. like it? It's getting yeah. better. Every yeah, episode gets like better it. this season. So I definitely like it. It's building up. Um, I've seen the comics. I've pretty much read all I hate the, the comics. What, what do they call them in high school? Spark notes or Cornell yeah. notes? Yeah. I pretty much watched and... I hate, I hate that. I, I'm so happy they're changing yeah, so much. I'm, I hate I'm, the comics. I'm really, I'm really happy too. I mean, the comics are just there for shock value. Yeah, I mean, they're. I don't think they're good. No, I'm being honest with you. I don't think they're really that good either. But it's really interesting to see that perspective of like what they change and what makes it 
the show. The way yeah, it is. for sure. So. so, all right, man, let's jump into the hot mic main topic. Best movies or games to watch and play for 4th of July. So this one was an interesting thing. So I wanted to start with games. Mm-hmm. I think games are cool. Uh, I think Helldivers is like kind of just like the one that instantly popped into my yeah, head. It's just over the top democracy for yeah. liberty, you know. Uh, I definitely recommend... Helldivers 2 and Starship Troopers yeah, for 4th of July. Yeah, it kind of just fits fun. out perfect for that. Um, let me see. What else would there You got be? any other games? I, I was, I mean, if you want to go, go the route, Call of Duty. <laughs> you me. know what I mean? Like play one of the campaigns on that yeah. day. Like one of the original Modern Warfares would be I fucking would like cool that. to me. So I'm just trying to think of the games that I've been playing lately. I've okay. been doing Division. I've been grinding out Diablo 4. Yeah. Diablo 4. And my friend... As bad as it is, he's getting me into League of Legends again. And I've just been playing that too. Trash. It is trash. Um, Never recommend it ever. Let's jump onto the movie side. Uh, easy one: Captain America's trilogy because it's America, right? Yeah. Um, and then you can obviously say Independence Day. Oh, that's a good one. But the big one on my shirt: Top Gun. Top Gun. Top Gun One Never and Two. It. Yeah, shut the fuck up. You are. <laughs> you are. You shouldn't even be in this country now. Like, you do not deserve to be here until you've seen Top Gun and Top I Gun Maverick. To. I know you do. I can't believe you haven't seen any of them. No, I Not even the last one. No. That's fucking insane to me. You're not American. <laughs> uh, Armageddon. Have you seen Armageddon? I'm really oh, my God. It. Stop. It's the one with the meteor, and they send, like, oil people up to the meteor to blow it up. Oh. Bruce Willis, Ben Affleck. Does like one of them? One of them dies. Yeah, one of them dies. Yeah, I'm not gonna say. Which I think one. I've seen seen him when I was little. Okay, that this movie's it. awesome. Total great watch to watch on Fourth of mm-hmm. July. Do you have any movies you want you would recommend? Not off the top of my head right now. Damn it, no. Phil. I know I'm trying, man. I'm trying. You're fucking up, man. You're fucking up. Um, Inglorious Bastards, another one. Inglorious Bastards. Have you seen that? Yes, I have. I was about to be. I was about to hop over this table, and beat you up. Well, I'm trying to think of like good war movies that I've that I've watched over the years. Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. Black Hawk Down. Um, Black Hawk Down is a great one. Yeah, I didn't know you'd seen that. Yeah, Black I didn't Hawk know you. Down. I didn't know you'd seen that one. Uh, Jaws is technically Full a good Metal one. Jacket. Oh, Full Metal Jacket's a great one. Yeah, that's. I'm really. Thinking okay. on all those war movies right now. All right, so I'm also looking up video games that people recommend. Okay, you ready? You ready? This is this is a good Tell list. We, we fucked up, man. Really? Assassin's Creed Three. It's actually oh, a really good one to say on Fourth of July. One. That's a good one. I like that. Wolfenstein. Oh. Oh. Any of them. Yeah. Killing Nazis on Fourth of July. I think I actually might replay Wolfenstein on Fourth of July now. Oh yeah. All the COD which one's your favorite? Too. Oh, COD Zombies. Yeah, that's another um, one. I think it was the second one after the, at least the yeah, stuff. Yeah, the New Colossus, the, yeah. Yeah, New Colossus. The New Colossus was great. Yeah, the second one is just refined combat, yeah. and it's really a, a step up from yeah. the first. Another one, Grand Theft Auto, if you really think about it. Like, it's America. It's the fucking bullshit of America. It I mean, makes It could also just be Fallout as well. Fallout, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Fallout 3, Fallout 4, all the Fallouts. All of those, all of those. So The Division, someone said The Division. Yeah. I, the Division. Saints Row 4, when you play as the president. <laughs> hey, man. That's a wild one. Uh, going back to movies for a second, um, National Treasure. Oh. Come on, man. A Night at the Museum, because you're dealing with the museum, the Smithsonian. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there's so- Rocky. Rocky. Oh, Rocky. Especially Rocky IV, where he goes and takes off in Russia. And it's basically just a whole training montage. Oh. Have you seen Rocky IV? No. Are you fucking kidding me? You've I've never seen, seen Rocky IV. I've only really seen like bits and bobs of each like Rocky movie. I've seen like the iconic moments growing up because my dad watched Rocky growing up. So <laughs> Okay, I'm about to say a movie. Okay. I hope to God you've seen this. You had to have the Sandlot. Yeah. Okay. Good for the July movie, right? Yeah, that is a good one. Okay. Okay. Here's one. I don't like this movie. A lot of people do. Team America, World Police. The puppet. Oh, one. that one. I don't like this movie, but what about, it, um, it's a solid one. What's that? I think Men in Black 
was also one. Men in Black, yeah. Men yeah. in Black's a good one too. I, I yeah. like Men in Black. I I think the first one's probably my favorite. As a kid, I was obsessed with the second one because of the the girl, mm-hmm. the the villain girl that, that was an alien. I don't know why. I, like childhood crush, maybe. Like maybe. I was going through puberty and I was like, who is that? <laughs> um Yeah, man. I, I'm still fucking what movie did you tell me you didn't just see? Armageddon. <laughs> And there was another one, uh, Rocky. Rocky. Yeah, Jesus Christ, man. The most patriotic movie of all time, basically. Um, Born on the 4th of July, you can say that one. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that one. The Patriot, I'm not sure. Uh, with uh, Mel Gibson? Yeah. Yeah. But we don't talk about Mel Gibson here, apparently. So. Oh. Um, Air Force One's a good one. Have you ever seen that? With no. Harrison. Oh, Jesus Christ, Phil. Oh, my God. You're just going to expose me on another movie that I haven't seen. I, I basically am calling you out for all of this. This is your homework, Phil, to watch a new movie once a week. A new movie once a week. A new old movie once a week. <laughs> oh, man. That is not that hard. That is. Shut hard. the fuck up. No, it is not. No. How many hours a week do you play video games? Yeah. Have you seen Coming to America? No. With Eddie. Oh my God. Okay. I won't give you too much shit on that because oh. I'd I'd only seen it like two, three years ago. And it's fucking funny. It is so funny. I thought it was gonna be stupid, but it was very mm. funny. I would recommend that one. Um Yeah, I mean that's also one of those on here as well, coming to America. An American Tale with the Little Mouse. Do you remember that one? The little Mouse with a hat. Stuart Little? No. <laughs> Stuart Little. <laughs> you like those movies? Dude, I loved Stuart Little growing up, didn't you? Yeah, he was fine. I was kind of like... I heard that the books were based off of like... Yeah, you want to hear boring. You want to hear a rumor I heard? What? I heard he's coming back for a movie. But, Stuart Little. But he's not the main character. Do you rem- Do you know those movies? Uh, I think it's like Peter the Rabbit or Peter the Rabbit. the Rabbit. No. Oh, fuck, dude, no. You know he was just in a movie, though? Really? Yeah, The. Really? did you ever see the Chip and Dale movie on no. Disney Plus? Oh, my God, it's so good. Um, let me see. It's like a new Peter movies, Rabbit. Apparently. Yeah, you don't fucking watch movies. Peter Rabbit. I think this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Peter Rabbit's apparently getting a new movie. And oh. from what I heard, I heard they want Stuart Little in there. Who owns Stuart Little? I don't fucking know. Someone. <laughs> I don't know about you, man. Oh, another good pick. American Sniper. Have you seen this one with Bradley Cooper? Yes. Great movie. That is a good one. Uh, First Man with Ryan Gosling, Neil Armstrong, great one. <sighs> Phil, I'm still, I'm Hateful still. Eight. Okay, old Wild Wild West. Okay, yeah, I, I dig Wild it. West Would you count Forrest Gump a good movie to watch on Fourth of July? I mean, if you're gonna watch Forrest Gump, I think you, I think you just rather watch Platoon. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, remember the Titans. Um, Friday Night Lights. Okay. Good morning, Vietnam. Have you seen that one? Mm-hmm. Will- oh, Jesus. Fucking Christ, Phil. Oh, Rambo. Phil. Rambo. Yeah. Okay. Rambo. I'm down for it. Have you actually seen Rambo? I watched the... Oh, my God. Which one is it? There's like 10 of them. No, Hold there's on. not. There's like five of them. There's no, five. There's like no, no, them. there's not. He's there's like no, 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 there, no, there is five Rambo movies. You know how I know? Because I ranked them all. There's only five of these, Phil. Rambo movies. I watched the most recent one where his daughter gets taken or something. So that's the only one you've seen? No. I was I've about to say, because that's the worst one. I seen... Yeah, Last Blood, and I've seen the 2008 one. Just right oh my up. god, he hasn't even seen the original, guys. Uh, I've seen a little bit of First Blood because I remember the. Cop so you've scene. seen a little bit of the first one. Yeah, because I remember that the is cop the that's the best one, the, uh, Phil. Phil, that's the best one where they had the argument. Did you like four? Do you remember liking four? The yeah, 2008 one. That one was fun. Yeah. I like that one. I was like, holy shit, this is pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's very brutal. It is very brutal. Um. Can you, um, so I guess, you know what, guys, leave us your thoughts. What are you watching? What are you playing on 4th of July? Um, yeah. You ready to get into the viewer questions? Yeah. Let's end the show on these. So, Phil, I know you're not much into the internet space in terms of things, but do you know people hate Star Wars? Uh, that the fandom hates Star Wars. Like, that it's just toxic. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I knew that Star Wars is pretty, has a pretty toxic. Okay, so have but. you heard anything on The Acolyte? 
Uh, I heard that it's definitely its weakest show. I completely disagree. Really? For anyone who says it's weaker than Book of Boba Fett can suck a penis. <laughs> uh, like, I, I'm genuinely being okay, honest I've with you. Okay, I've seen Book of Boba Fett, and I was pretty disappointed yeah, by that. Yeah, I, I will say, you should watch The Acolyte. Okay. Don't look up anything. Don't just go into it. There, It's not a perfect show. It is not a perfect show. I think there's great elements of it, and I think those things are the better al- aspects of it. Mm-hmm. The lightsaber duels in this, by episode, episode five's lightsaber duels, best lightsaber duels, honestly, probably ever. Yeah, that was the, um, so far, from what I heard, or just like Dude, I could recommend it episode on like five, I, I shit you not, is some of the coolest things I've ever seen them do. Yeah. It is badass as shit, but I like, it's a murder mystery. Okay. But then you find out who murdered people, like instantly. And then you're like, okay, well, why are they doing it? There's all, It's always giving me a question. But that's not the question that this person's asking. Mm-hmm. They're asking, is Star Wars salvageable at this point? Have we reached a no return? And if not, are we close? I, I'll let you go on this. Uh, so Star Wars is like my favorite franchise besides mm-hmm. Toy Story. Toy Story is like my favorite thing of all time for anything, but... In terms of like franchise, Star Wars is my favorite. Is it salvageable? Yeah, I think it is. I think for the most part, anything's salvageable. I think they need, I, I personally for me, I have not met anyone in real life <laughs> that's not on the internet that it hates the Acolyte. Okay. Every person I've talked to that is either a general going person or someone who just likes Star Wars, Specifically, I always use my coworkers as examples because they are not in the movie space. They are not in the geek space. Yeah. They all love it. They all love it. My manager, who I I love, but told me that the Robert Pattinson Batman movie is the worst Batman movie he's ever fucking seen in his life, which still blows my fucking mind, loves the Acolyte. And he is a huge Star Wars fan. Huh. So is it salvageable? For the general going audience, I think, yeah. I think, yeah, for sure. I think when you don't have someone screaming in your ear that something sucks and being a little bitch about it and telling you to go kill yourself, yeah, it's very easy to enjoy these shows still and movies. But when you do, it it makes it, like, I'm not reviewing the show anymore because Uh, of that because I just, I I might review the entire season once it's over, but I was just mm. so tired of someone telling me to go kill myself Uh, every time I reviewed a new episode. Yeah, that... That because there's other like reasons that. that are certain people are getting mad about it, like bigotry and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Whether it's because the main character is Asian or African American, like people are getting mad about that. Mm-hmm. And then like one of the the creators said, "This is the gayest Star Wars show." Okay, like I don't I don't see where it is, but okay. <laughs> like <laughs> for me, is it salvageable? Nothing. Everything's salvageable. Yeah. If <laughs> If fucking Transformers still has a franchise, then I think we're good, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for the people who grew up, though, on Star Wars primarily, um, I think those people, it's probably not. I think those people are just, you're um, going to stick with the original trilogy, and that's it. But every single time something new has come out for Star Wars, every era, someone hates it. Mm-hmm. Someone hates the originals, I guarantee you. People hated the fucking prequels. People hate the fucking sequels, the sequel trilogy. People hate the Disney Plus stuff. People hate the Mandalorian. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's always people who enjoy it. So I do think it is salvageable. I don't think that it's reached a point of no return. I don't think we're close, though, to the uniting of a fan base. And some of that is the toxicity of certain fandoms and people in it. And not understanding that, yes, some people can just like things that you don't like. Mm -hmm. But I also think that the big primary issue with this all is Kathleen Kennedy, who is the the studio head right now over there. Yeah. Um, I have a lot more to say, but I'm going to let you talk about yeah. a little bit for a second. Then I'll talk a little yeah. bit more about Kathleen Kennedy. Because I, I grew up with Star Wars, so it is definitely one of my favorite franchises. Um, I, do, I don't have all the shows down mm-hmm. or everything like that. I haven't watched The Acolyte. I finished the first season of Boba Fett with my brother. I was really disappointed by the it. The Mando episodes were the best. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's Mando 
in disguise and it's like okay and they killed the best fucking bounty hunter cad bane in the mm. dumbest fucking way he should have been the main villain of the entire show <laughs> yeah the whole I, I didn't like the the biker gang oh in yeah Star Wars. the like, vespa gang yeah, yeah no yeah, i thought that was all just really fucking lame yeah <laughs> so to go on and from there though like as far as like salvageable i definitely think that it can be salvaged um, I saw so like a lot of the conflicting ideologies for like directing for like the sequel movies where like Palpatine somehow returned and you see like there were some a lot of like characters potential that I saw that was wasted which with, like Finn and all of that goes Ray. to Kathleen Kennedy yeah why the fuck did you make a trilogy and tell each director they can do something different because for me when I saw Last Jedi it was not the movie I wanted but on rewatches, I was like, I don't hate this. Like, it's it's different than what I expected it to be. But I'm fine with the choices. And then you see Rise of Skywalker, and it's like, okay, whoa, they said, fuck that, fuck you, fuck this, fuck that. We're, We're gonna riding a horse. On yeah, this yeah, shit. yeah. Basically, let's read, let's redo all this. Yeah. So it felt like every time I watched one of those sequel movies, it was like a director trying to hit the reset button over mm -hmm. the other director. Yeah, and a Which, lot of the characters just kind of fell flat because they never got a got an arc that they deserved. Which I think is again going back to Kathleen Kennedy. Why is there not a plan? Why was there not a plan for the sequel trilogy? Why is there not a plan currently right now? Maybe there is behind the scenes. I think like Mando clearly has somewhat of a plan because it obviously ties into Ahsoka a little bit. And mm -hmm. then Ahsoka ties into the future Mandalorian and Grogu movie coming out in 2026. And then Dave Filoni's getting his own movie in the future. That's going to be the culmination of Ahsoka and Mando and all this stuff that they've been doing in the in-between of the sequel, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I'm for that. That's awesome. Make Thrawn the villain. That's fucking great. Did you watch Ahsoka? Yes. Yeah, I thought Ahsoka was great. I thought Ahsoka was great. I, I too. wish some of the lightsaber fights were a little bit better in there, but I still really, really, really like that show. Mm -hmm. But where's this plan? What are you doing? Like, it all goes back to that sequel trilogy. And they're making another Ray movie. And if the rumor is true that that is episode 10, I pray to God you have a plan. I pray to God that you have episode yeah. 10, 11, and 12. You don't have to have the whole thing planned, but where is it going? Because what has Marvel been doing so great? And some people might debate right now they're not doing great. Yeah. But previously, they had a plan. And they adjusted that plan when need be, but they always had a plan. Mm -hmm. And they're the one studio that's been able to do that. And Star Wars, it's like we're bouncing into this era. We're bouncing into this era. We're bouncing into this era. And your fan base is over here screaming, give us... The fucking old republic give us old republic <laughs> yeah i think that would be do you, a see, it? Do you, do you see it anywhere mm -mm. no so i i'm with you man but you're more of a casual so like f to you do you hate star wars are you frustrated by it at all or are you just like hoping that when you watch it that it's good i'm just hoping when i watch it that it's good okay um, i started obi-wan and i didn't even finish it i obi-wan it I finished Ahsoka. Every week just made me more frustrated. <laughs> I finished Ahsoka, which I thought was like definitely one of the better mm -hmm. shows. Mando, I definitely think is still top dog. Book of Boba okay. Fett, I don't, I don't see it getting a second season. It's, no, <laughs> I don't want a second season. But you know what? I if you can for me, I think you should check out the Acolyte. Okay. I think you'll like it. I it, it's slow, mm -hmm. but once you get to episode five, hopefully going forward it gets better. Okay. Like or not better, but it just builds off of that. So I think you'll like it. They're like 30 minutes each. Oh, yeah. The third episode, I know you'll make fun of. That's one thing I but absolutely hate. Hear me about. that. You're going to make fun of the third episode. Okay. Okay. There's going to be stuff in there that you're going to make fun of. I already know you and that's okay. Okay. <laughs> so before, before the next time we record, you think you can finish? The Acolyte? At least catch up? I could. I'd I think you should. watch Acolyte or Top Gun. I think honestly, I'd rather you watch Acolyte. Okay. Because I think if I'm gonna watch Top, I would rather watch it with you for that right. for that other podcast yeah, I would idea we watch have. A movie with you that that sounds more better than watching a show. Yeah. Fallout was fun to watch though. Oh, we watched yeah. Fallout I together. Fallout. I liked watching Fallout yeah, with Fallout you. Fallout was amazing. What's in the oh Arcane? We gotta okay. watch Arcane this. Oh, I hope I get that early. Yeah. Then we can binge that to one together. That'd be cool too because if you're getting back in the League of Legends and stuff, so I could explain. Yeah. And but, it has like no relevance yeah. to that show, which thank God. <laughs> yeah. Well, the last question we have from a viewer is, do you have any TV shows you watch, but don't review to kind of get away from YouTube? Now I really like this question because there's a lot that I actually decide not to like review? get early because I don't want to review it. 
Oh. For like multiple things. Some of it's because I think the movie or show is probably going to be ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just like, I'll just watch it on my own time. Mm -hmm. Other times it's because I don't want to. So to kind of give context, Crunchyroll, do you know what Crunchyroll is? Yeah. They reached out to me and wanted me to review a new anime series um, that I was actually really interested in. They were offering to give me a free Crunchyroll subscription and everything like this to review it. I want to get them early. I just have to review it like the mm -hmm. day it comes out. I said no. Because I just, if I want to watch that series, I don't. And anime is like that one thing that like, I have reviewed some anime movies. I've talked about anime on podcast, but I've never like actually full on reviewed like all of Naruto or all of mm -hmm. Dragon Ball. Like I'll review the movies that come out and stuff like that. Or like My Hero Academia. I tried yeah. doing things for My Hero and I got burnt out very fast because I just found that I just like enjoying it for myself. Yeah. Um, so anime is like a big thing. Um, sometimes I want to bring a little bit more of it to the channel. Maybe that's what I can do this podcast with. But as of right now, that's like the one thing that I'm like just happy that I don't have to talk about. I can watch a fucking whole season of My Hero Academia and just keep it to myself. Or maybe I'll post it on Twitter, you know. That's right. So that's one of those. Um, I'm also getting to the point that uh, House of Dragons started and I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones, but... I don't know if I'm going to review the next season. I might just sit there and enjoy it for myself. No, no particular reason. Mm -hmm. I just, I just like watching the show. And I think that's there's it. like, um, it's just kind of like almost to how comfort food is. Mm -hmm. You just want to just turn your brain off and just be like, okay. Yeah, this is it. Uh, exactly. Or just like not have to stress about doing something afterwards. Yeah. Um, which like, I think you'll start to feel eventually once mm -hmm. this podcast starts to continue to grow and stuff like that. I'm curious to see how you feel after Comic-Con. I think you're going to be exhausted. Yeah. I think you're going to genuinely... I think I will be more exhausted this year too. Like we both physically will be because we're planning to do more, mm -hmm. but we're also planning to do a podcast every day that we're out there. Yeah, that's going to be wild. I'm going to tell you right... Edit it. <laughs> I, those will be very low edited videos. Okay. But I'll tell you this, like... Because um, like kind of just to give a little bit of an insight, I guess, is, you know... We get out there Wednesday, so we'll go to preview night. Depending on what we see and do, we'll probably we'll do a podcast. Deadpool that night, too. We right? see it Thursday night. So we Thursday. see it the, the following night at like 9. Gotcha. And it's a two-hour film. Cool. So then we're going to see the movie. And then, Phil, when we get back, we're going to record a review for it. Oh, wow. A spoiler review. Dude, we're going to be so tired. I know. I know. I'm going to bring us coffee. And That's stuff. Awesome. So, but we'll be good. We'll be getting like five hours of sleep, but I think it'll be worth it. Mm -hmm. Not just for like, obviously like hoping that people watch or listen to our podcast, but I think for our like friendship too. Yeah. Like when we go to Comic-Con, obviously we like cover certain things, but most of the time you're the man behind the scenes. You're holding my camera while I'm talking something live. Mm -hmm. This time. I'll actually be able to speak with you and yeah. it's it's definitely a new experience for it me. is. I love it. You're I gonna edit from. These. You're gonna help me edit. Yeah. It's you're gonna, gonna do fun. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Buy some portable batteries. Buy two for yourself. Gotcha. I'm gonna prom I'm gonna write you a whole thing of like what I recommend that you bring. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. But I'm excited, dude. I think it's gonna be cool. Even though we'll be exhausted of doing so much coverage, um, I'm excited to see how we build that up. But uh, d like just to kind of keep in the context of this question, like, is there anything that maybe eventually like you won't want to talk about on the show that you'll just want to keep like whether it's a certain game like you could say league of legends like you just don't feel like yeah. i don't know if i'll ever cover it you know yeah no i don't think i'll ever cover league of legends i played that game for over yeah. 10 years it's bad i every single time i've had someone yeah. who's watched like arcane and came up to me because they know i play league yeah they ask me about the game i tell them don't play it <laughs> yeah it's it's terrible um what is it? Uh, there was a funny clip. It was a popular streamer. Mm -hmm. He decided to get into League of Legends. And he's like, I'm not going to speak until I hit gold or whatever it was. He didn't speak. And the moment he hit gold, the first thing he said is, it fucking sucks. And as he's saying how bad the game is, he queues up for another ranked <laughs> match. It's just a League of Legends thing. is a fucking addiction. Yeah, um, it's it's really bad. I don't recommend yeah. it. Anything else? I guess taking out the TV show question, anything else you or even games, is there anything you won't ever want to discuss on the podcast? I mean, I've already, I feel like I've discussed like. Would you get pretty personal on here? I I feel like I do get pretty personal. No, I is that like okay? Can. Like to get personal? Like, would Sometimes. you be okay? Like There's the certain whole th starting stories stuff, like yeah. from my high school stuff, like. 
it's kind of like ooh. I'm gonna be honest with you that because that's my goal is for us to get a little personable on yeah. you. there's certain things that privately in my life I can't talk about uh, publicly yet um, in a couple months I probably will mm-hmm. but once it like all comes to fruition and things like that yeah. but uh, I, I think those are like the things that like I'm excited to talk about eventually and then like obviously like with you and my friendship and then like Tyler's and ours and like our whole venture yeah. on this podcast and like any guests we also bring on and stuff I think it's just I think it's really cool. So I, I know. Like, uh, yeah. It's just like an end goal for me personally. Yeah. Because this has been like something that's been helping me like step out of my shell. Which is cool. Like really if you guys go back and watch the first episode we ever did with Phil and how much you've grown. It's it's wild to see. Like, dude, you're taking the conversation now. Like, I don't even have to drive it anymore. Yeah. It's just really cool. I think just like as a, an end goal for me personally, I would love to just keep being positive and mm-hmm. like like you said be personal enough with people to kind of like share my experiences in life and like yeah i don't know just show people like even though things kind of get bad you could still do good yeah. in the world. well and that's that's genuinely the reason i've always wanted to start a podcast like this mm-hmm. and i don't know if i've told you this before if i've even publicly said it is my friends are the coolest fucking people in the world to me my friends some of my family, but definitely the family I'm close with out here. My wife is also cool. She'll be joining me uh, on audio only versions um, because she doesn't want to do video, which is fine. Like if yeah. she feels comfortable to do video, eventually we'll switch the video. But I think the people in my life are the coolest fucking people. And the reason I want to start a podcast is because I want to have them on and talk about conversations yeah. like this, you know, to where we can shoot the shit. And, and that's why I genuinely um, was happy with one of my friends kind of went over the whole layout and the template and recommended this. Because yeah. I don't know about you. I think this is our best podcast yet. Oh, well, I, think, I genuinely mean that. I think cool. the structure of this is incredible. I, I kind of really it's, like this structure too because it lets us talk about just whatever. Yeah, and you can be a geek. And just so everyone knows, the reviewing segment won't just be about movies, TV, games. It could be about a comic book. It could be about a restaurant we went to. It could be about Comic-Con in general. It could um, be about my shitty internet service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, we should have done that. Damn it. Okay, <laughs> Phil. Okay, because uh, we're going a little bit too far long. Um, I do want to say this is that because um, I think the next Shit. podcast you also have to be on too. Yeah. It's the second week is when you're usually on, right? Mm-hmm. So once we do that one too, let's review that. Let's yeah. put it in there. Um, you'll put together that template, but I think that's where we say goodbye, man. Yeah. So uh, I just want to do like a little closing message. Yeah, of like, course. Obviously, uh, since I'm super new to the podcast, I'm still very well coming out of my show and just yeah. getting understanding. For anyone out there who just is nervous like me doing something like this. It's really cool that I've had a friend who finally kicked my butt into gear into it's like, all right, here you go. This Start is your thing. fucking Twitch. Start your fucking yeah, Twitch channel. I, know I need to. But this like it doesn't even have to be streaming or whatever it is. If there's something that makes you nervous but you want to do it, just go do it. And That's um, what I did. I think the my closing message is like I said, I want my end goal to be like of course, I want to entertain and give reviews, and so I know that not everyone shares my opinion and that's like okay. same viewpoint, and I always want to take those criticisms to, like, well-constructed criticisms to heart and all that. But I, my biggest dream is to give people something good to feel about, and, like, I just wish everyone is doing well. And that's all I really want to do is my message to you guys. Fuck yeah, just so... Be, I Everyone hope. give this man a round of applause right now. If well, you're sitting there, I, I love it, dude. I love yeah. it. it. It's a tough world. No matter what you yeah. live and what kind of lifestyle mm-hmm. you have, I'm very privileged in my life, but I understand that not so many people are. Mm-hmm. And I just like want to keep, whether it is making people laugh or even angry that I dislike <laughs> something that they may like very well. Yeah. I, I just hope that, it gives them something to be happy about or keep mm-hmm. them entertained to get them through whatever tough times that they, that they have. Sweet. So love you all. Whoever. Thank is you. Yeah. Out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much, so much for listening. If you're listening to us audio only, uh, you guys can find us on the into the geek versus with Zach Poe podcast feed on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to stuff, it's probably there. Uh, same thing goes for YouTube. If you want to watch the video version of this, or maybe you are, feel free to check it out. The audio feed does get exclusive stuff and will eventually get exclusive 
content over there too. So you definitely want to make sure to subscribe over there. But my name is Zach. And my name is Phil. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Have a great Stay day. Stay classy.